Hi friends! Today is going to be a reading vlog of Blood Like Fate by Lizelle Sanbury. Once again, as always, when I do a, a reading vlog, I don't film an opening clip. So this is after the fact, which is why if you can tell I've been crying, I've already read the book. I've already been crying, so that's fine. Uh, if you don't know, Blood Like Feet is the second book in the Blood Like Magic duology by Lizelle Sanbury, who is a fellow author tuber who I will link in the description box down below. If you have not read Blood Like Magic yet, I recommend you check out my reading vlog of the first book. I'll link that down below. Um, I read that last year as an arc as well, and then I had Blood Like Fate as an arc this year as well. One thing I always say when you're watching these review vlogs is that is a friend of mine, so uh, take that with a grain of salt, if you will. Um, but I do always give honest reviews, so take that as you will. The series follows Voya Thomas, who is a witch living in a near-future Toronto. The book is very magic and sci-fi heavy. Um, Voya is given a calling, which is this task that she has to do um, in order to get her magical gift as part of her family. Voya is known to be very indecisive and really struggles with passing her calling and essentially is given this task to either... Um, kill her first love or for her family to lose their magic forever um, and when you learn what the consequences are of her family losing their magic forever it's much higher than what you would think that it would be uh, so the first book follows Boya having to make this decision of what she's going to do and how she's going to do it and it was done fantastically and the second book is done with the fallout of what happened in book one and as I have already read it it was fantastic so um, I'm gonna get you guys started on the, the to past me so you can see um, all of the fun things like me crying. I am currently at 16% of Blood Like Fate and too lazy to get up and find my tripod so this is the glorious angle that you shall get. Um, so here's my first impression of the second book. I definitely think that if you haven't read the first book since it came out last year in June, and you are not good at remembering stories much like myself, I highly recommend, um, either doing, uh, reading like a recap, rereading through your own review, um, or looking into a spoiler review to kind of remind yourself of some of the things that happened uh, because there were a lot of plot twists in the second half especially the last like 10-15% of Blood Like Magic um, so like I definitely think a refresher for yourself would be good. Me who is terrible at remembering things I do think there are a couple of things that I'm still at 16% I'm like mmm I don't exactly remember what happened like I have a I have a vague idea in my brain of what happened but I don't remember exactly what happened uh, but for most things for most things there's enough context in the story on page now um, to get me like a refresher but again I have a terrible memory so that's probably just a me thing uh, but if you also have a bad memory, you might want to check out a spoiler review or reread your own review, um, which I have since done. I also watched my reading blog of Blood Like Magic as well to refresh my brain. But so far, I'm enjoying... No, I'm not really enjoying how things are happening because I feel terrible for Voya, but... Um, so far, everything's reading really well, having a good time, ready to read some more. So that be where I'm at and I'm gonna get back to reading and hopefully between now and the next update I will actually find my tripod. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me, still haven't uh, found the tripod. This is what I get for cleaning the office. 
Um, I'm at 26% and I'm giving up for the night. I'm having a really good time though. Um, I'm really enjoying seeing Boya come into her own. I mean, oh, I don't know. What do I say? Can I talk about things that happened? Yeah, because this video is for people who have, who have, who have watched the first, who have read the first book, so, so you know what happened in the first book, right? Okay. Watching Boya come into her own as a matriarch and seeing the, uh, consequences of the choices that she made at the end of the first book, um, seeing all of that kind of come together and then, um, the scene that I just read was a bunch of the matriarchs from the other families. So we're getting even more of the other families than what we were getting before. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion about somebody. I have a, I have ideas and thoughts in my brain. Uh, so I'm like piecing together all of like the plot threads that I think are going to mean something. Uh, when we get there. <sighs> I am... It's real. It's still really early. It's like 8:30, but I am going to go to bed because I have not been sleeping very well. So I want to try to get as much sleep as I can when I can, and I'm tired. So I'm gonna do that. But essentially, I'm having a good time. There's been some very good moments, and I'm excited to see where things go from here. Hello friends, a tripod has been found. I exist now. Um, it is currently Friday night at 9.30 p.m. I have been reading today. I am on page 192, which is at about the 40% mark, so I've read about 13% today. Having a good time. Teared up a few times. Uh, oh, oh. I think one of the things that I really love about this book is the society as a whole. I'm reading about uh, like the way that these families really are these insular little capsules of groups of people and Voya is trying to like make them all come together and to work together to be this larger community of people to try to help everybody out. And a lot of the other people are not really, uh, they're not down for that. And reading about um, different choices that different families have made and some of the things that they've done that have been quite questionable, things that they do um, for power it, versus, you know, coming together and being a collective group of people and having power that way is very interesting. So um, I'm enjoying like the the social aspect of everything. Definitely one of my favorite parts of the book um, of um, this duology is the community itself, the black community of witches, um, seeing them both inside their family and then also in the community as a whole and how they all interact. It's a very interesting uh, perspective and I am enjoying reading it. So I'm going to get back to reading. Don't know how far I'm going to get tonight, but I'm just going to keep reading till I can't keep my little eyes open anymore. It is 11 o'clock at night and I am at the 50% mark. I just finished chapter 17 and <sighs> it's going to be time to go to bed for me after work in the morning. I should turn on some light so it's not so like dark and gross, right? Definitely having some moments in this, um, you know, things that make me cry, uh, things that make me tear up. It's this family, like this family really just hits me in ways that a lot of families don't. And I appreciate that they are a very close yet very <laughs> weird sort of family. When I watched back my vlog of the first book, I talked a lot in the beginning about how the characters um, in Voya's family were not necessarily the most likable characters. 
and I think a lot of that in the second book is still true. Um, there's a lot of characters who you're like, oh, like I just want to like drown them in a river, but also you can see like their importance to the family and what they bring to the family, and also you can see a goodness in them. They're very full characters. They're very flawed. Everyone has their flaws. Everyone has their thing. And the reason why they are the way they are is part of the story. It's part of the plot. Like, it's not just like this, you know, random thing where, you know, her aunt is sassy. No, her aunt is like angry at her and her aunt is angry at her because, you know, she was made the matriarch and her was something that her aunt had always coveted, her aunt had always wanted. And it's like, it's not her fault, but that's a real emotion. Like we, feelings don't make sense most of the time, you know? Um, you get feelings for reasons that don't make a lot of sense. And so seeing them on page and it's just her, LaSalle's characters are done so well. They're just an absolute joy to read, but also they break my heart. I have a pretty big suspicion on a character. Um, I, I think I, I think I know some things. I think I've figured out some things and I'm interested to see how it plays out. I do think that it's going to be like, I said, I'm at 50%. So I feel like I should have a better grasp of the villain at this point than what I do, but also because I'm getting these feelings, I think maybe we're getting there. I definitely have some opinions and some thoughts and some questions uh, about what's going on. So that's going to be it for me tonight. I thought I was going to finish this book tonight, but apparently not. Uh, which means I'm going to finish it Sunday because this vlog's going up on Tuesday. So I have basically zero time to finish this book, which again, like my first vlog, um, I was reading it like right before release and then I ended up having um, my second COVID shot and was just like in a COVID coma for like a week and <laughs> didn't, didn't leave myself enough time to finish the book. Um, I did, I did get my vlog up on release day. I feel like this is going to be the same deal, like I'm going to be real close. Um, which is fun because um, Monday I have a readathon starting. And I also have another book that I need to read by the 12th um, for beta reading. So I have a lot to do and I was hoping to have this one done tonight so that I could work on the other book the next two days, but that's clearly not happening. Um, but I'm having a great time. Um, I'm reading it a lot slower than what I normally read um, just because I'm having fun. So, you know, this had a cookie crumble sometimes. <laughs> I'm off, friends. I'll see you probably not tomorrow, but Sunday. Hello, friends. It is Sunday. It's actually like 4.30ish in the afternoon. I have been reading today. I am currently at 82%. <sighs> Having a good time. I haven't really felt the need to update because I've just been reading having fun but I know the 80% mark is where the last book got crazy and so I figured it was time to stop give you an update for the last 30% and then jump in and see what kind of fun things happen. So I will say that I definitely had guessed a couple of plot points um, very vaguely you know I mentioned earlier that I had an idea of like what was going on with a couple of things and I definitely was correct about those things. I'm not mad about it because I like it. It's a good plot. Like I like those plot direction. Fantastic. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about that I'm reading right now, if you've read the first book, you know that um, one of Oya's cousins, Alex, um, her mother has passed away but her father is essentially a drug addict he has there's a specific drug that doesn't exist in our real world um, but there's a specific drug that he's addicted to it's an injection drug yeah those scenes they I don't I don't remember if I talked about it in the first review vlog 
I don't know Lizelle's life <laughs> like that, you know. Um, Lizelle is my friend, but I don't know that much about her life. But I can tell you um, from personal experience that uh, Alex's relationship with her dad is very similar to my relationship with my dad. Um, with the exception that I don't think that my dad will ever come back from that. I think that Alex's dad has a potential to be a decent human being and I don't know that my dad has that potential. Uh, so those scenes in particular are very hard for me but also moving and also they make me cry a lot. So it's always interesting to see something about yourself reflected in a story that you think has such great character work and I think that shows that um, that the author is able to empathize with other people in the real world because they have that ability to make characters that are um, those of us who are reading are able to empathize with as well. So just more in the Go Lizelle column. So I'm going to get back to reading. I have, let me do some math here. I'm currently at 7.38 of 902, which means I'm on page 393 of 480. So I have a little less than 100 pages left to read and it'll probably take me another hour and a half-ish. Uh, so here I go. I'm currently being attacked buy a book so um figured I'd bring you along with me I'm finished. Whew. Okay. There is something about this community, this family, the magic system that for me is just so ah, fantastic. It's what makes the story for me. Um, looking at the story as a whole um I definitely feel like um in the second book in particular there was a little meandering plot wise but I think when you're so invested in 
the characters and what happens and the magic system and the community and I think all of that trumps any like slowness in plot moving forward which is fine. I think this book this both of these books this duology is very important for people who don't look like me um who have ancestors who have suffered who have been through some shit and th who have had to deal with life just being absolutely unfair and unjust to them because in this magic system you have the ability to see um, some of your more important ancestors them being these people who kind of guide you as your life goes through I think that is something that um, a lot of religions not necessarily you know the major religion of Christianity but a lot of religions really believe that your ancestors are um, the people who guide you and who people who help you on the path to being your true self this definitely takes a more literal approach to that but I think that it is done very very well I think that again these characters this family the way that people are built together and as I said in the first in the first book and in the first vlog I talked about how I you know, like all of the characters are bad people and I think that the point is that nobody's perfect we've all made mistakes in our past we've all done things that have not been good for us or for others we've all done things that have hurt other people but you can't live your life based off of that past hurt and that past mistake you have to move forward and make new life choices based off of what's not going to continue to hurt people you don't have to necessarily make things right in order to make things better um i just the sentiment the feeling the love the community support um the way that boya was this perfect perfect person to bring all of these people together and to do the things that needed to be done to save their families it was just so well done there were definitely for me more surprises in the first book than in the second book I don't think there was anything that really happened that was like a huge surprise for me um, but it was just a damn good story it was a good book to get lost in to um, to really you know get in your emotions get in your feels make you look at um, life and reevaluate things and I we get that a lot in like general fiction but you don't get that a lot in something that is this magic and sci-fi based um, this magic system is one of my favorite magic systems that I've ever read um, because it's it's not it's not so simple that it doesn't make sense but it's also not so vast that it doesn't make sense you know what I mean the fact that who we are is a lot of you know the blood the the blood of our ancestors runs through us and makes us who we are and that's what gives them their magic and that's what gives them these powers and gives them the power to be the people who they need to be and it's just it's very eloquently done so well done and I just I had a fantastic time um as always I'm not going to um rate this right away um because I like to kind of sit on them for a little bit and and decide where I'm gonna be but I'll have my review linked down below so if you want to check out my full review like if this wasn't full enough um but clearly I'm gonna be on the higher end of things um but yeah definitely I had a really good time definitely recommend for anybody who read the first book um, if you've watched this far and you haven't read the first book and you've been spoiled for the first book you could still read the first book and the second book highly recommend very good very fantastic obviously I've been crying for like an hour it's fine you have read this book or the first book and you would like to discuss them that's what the comment section is for down below I will also leave purchase links down below as well 
that is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!